Okay, so let's get started on this ideation creation exercise. And what we're going to do is we're going to create these kind of Blade Runner cities. If you look at them, they're kind of really detailed. Um, and one of the interesting things about them is that they're built actually in geometry. This is all actual real geometry. So one of the things we're going to learn is how to use a displacement map to create real geometry. And once we've done that, then we'll, you know, we'll add some decals. And also we're going to talk about how we can create chromatic aberration, vignetting, color toning, a lot of different things in the compositor. So we can create these kind of very moody renders like these that you're seeing here. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about this pro first product we're going to use, which is called JS Placement. And you can get, I, I'm using the portable, you can download it for Windows, Mac, or Linux. But I would recommend that if you like this product and you want to use it, you know, go to PayPal and hit this guy up and give him some money. So I think that'd be a good idea. There's a lot of cool things you can do with this stuff. And uh, first thing I want to do is show you a little bit about how I use JS placement to create the kind of displacement maps that we'll be using. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here we are in JS placement. And this is what it looks like. And you can close it over here and you can click this button here to open up stuff. And what I'll do is let's start off in JS placement two. And there's really two different areas in here that I like to use. And that's one is this crap pack. And keep in mind that every time you click, you're going to get a completely new design. But this is an actual 8K image. It'll create a very large image. A lot of these details may be a little bit too small for us. So I like to take this sprite scaling and move it up to about 95 and start here. And what I'm doing actually is I'm looking for something like this. It's got a nice rooftop area. The whites are rooftop or some area, large area that I can use as a center for my scene setup. And once I have something I like, I'll just go ahead and hit the save height. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And I'm going to call this one. This is 53. Okay, so we'll just do this. And then once I've done that, I'm going to actually go into the toggle the colorizer and I'm going to basically find something that, you know, that might work well. That's a little too bright. Let's see what else there's in here. Let's see what this is. Yeah, that's kind of nice. So let's, let's save that color. And let's see if I can get one with a little blue in it, maybe. Let's see, we tried that one. That's a nice gray one. Hey, maybe I like this one right here. So I'm going to save this color too. And then we'll toggle that back off. And so that's one way. Now, if you, if you don't have a very powerful computer, you may want to use this big data one because it only has kind of squares. It uses rectangles. And because of that, you can use a lower setting on your mesh to create this. So that's just something that I, I would recommend. You can use either one. Both of those renders I showed you before, the orange one was done with the crap pack and the blue one was done with big data. So either one. And then once you're done with that, let's go over here and let's go to the dot grid. And this is where we get our lighting. And I want to turn off, I'm going to turn off these hollow ones. And, and I'll click here and this will create that. And what I want to do is I want the scale to be much smaller. And I want the drawing chance to be much smaller. Something like this. Okay, so this will be good. And uh, once I've done that, I can hit save height. And we'll just call this... That's a dot grid. We'll just save that just like that. Okay, so that's it. That's that's what we've done. We've created our displacement maps that we're going to use to create our geometry. So on to the next step is let's create our geometry. Okay, so now we're in uh, Blender 3.0. I'm going to select everything A, X, delete everything. I'll leave these selections fine here. And what I'm going to do is start off by just saying, let's just put a plane right in here. And with this plane, I'm going to jump over and I'm going to grab a modifier. And the first one I'm going to add is a subdivision surface modifier. And I'll go simple and let's go like something like seven. So if I go into my wireframe view, which is right here and turn this off, you'll see that's the density that we have currently. Okay. The next modifier I want to use is the displace modifier. And I'm going to set this to like something like maybe 0.15. We can adjust this later. And then I'm going to create a new texture for that. And I can click on this little button right here, show texture and texture tab. And now I'm going to open up one of those images I just created. And let's take a look at these. So I think this is the one that I just created. Let's try that. 
So that's a grayscale image, and you can see it already pops it up rather nicely. Works pretty good. So that's my scene that I've got set up. Now back to the modifiers. Now if I create a levels of 10, you'll see that I'm gonna get a lot denser mesh. Let's turn this on optimal display here. And the denser the mesh, the higher the quality. Let's go ahead and look at this in a cycles view. We can see what I'm talking about. So there, that's pretty cool. And by the way, just, just something that you might want to know is you can always hit this new button, create a new material for this, and go Shift A, and we're just going to grab this ambient occlusion, and we're going to stick this AO, or the color, doesn't matter, into the base color. And you see what it did? It just creates a nice AO effect in here as well as in Eevee. You'll, you'll get you'll get a, a AO effect in EV too. So I turn this off. It doesn't give us as much. So you get the idea. But actually, we want to be here in this material. I'm going to call this material A displace. And the reason for that is I want to set up this material now before I go much further. I'm going to actually go back to seven right now, so this is easier to see. And we'll set the material, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in a human. If you have some characters, this is one that I can't give you because I don't own the rights to it, but I will give you an ergo character. So let's just grab this 50 percentile man, and we'll select this, and I wanna add an insert somewhere. Let's put it right, right there. Okay, so that's what the man looks like. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm going to want to scale this so that it, you know, it's going to be relative to that man. So let's just move it out, something like that, and we'll select the man. And let's move him up a little bit more, and let's scale this a little bit larger. So maybe it's like that. Maybe our view is going to be from this angle. Let's grab our man again. Now I can go over here and I can grab this man. And uh, let's just go into smart mode. So when I click on anything, I'll, I'll select the whole thing. I'll just right click on them and say, Kid Ops Relocate Insert. And now I'm basically placing them on the uh, ground. And let's turn off the snap mode so I can move them around on this ground. So, so now the next thing I'll do, let's go ahead and just frame my shot. And to do that, I'm gonna click on this. Let's give this color, this base color, something a little darker so we can see it a little better. And we'll say Shift A, and we'll add a camera, and then Shift A, and let's add a sunlight. And let's take that sunlight, move it up. Let's kind of get the view where we want it, which I think is, maybe it's gonna be something like this. Once I get that where I want it, I'm gonna hold the Control Alt and the numpad zero, and that's gonna give me my camera view. And so that's not quite what I want, but that's okay. Uh, I'll go into view, click on this button, which is camera to view. And now I can move this around. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find a view in here that's somewhat interesting, but I can fill up that whole, this whole region. In fact, I'm gonna go back in here. I'm gonna make this, instead of 1920 by 1080, I'm gonna make it 1920 by 850. So I can get just a little, I can get a little more data in there. Okay, and let's, lock it down now. Now with this lockdown, anytime I go off, I'll lose my camera, but I hit the numpad zero and I've got it back. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is click on my sun here. So I hit R twice. And now what I wanna do is I wanna actually point the sun so I get the right shadow, but I'm not seeing it. Why is that? Well, I'm in our look dev mode here, viewport shading. So I can come in here and say scene lights and scene world. Go back into the world, by the way, and we're just gonna delete this world so we have no world. And let's go to the little sunlight and let's give him maybe a strength of five. And then RR, and we can start to see what's happening. And I like the shadows coming straight at us. So kind of somewhat long and straight at us is gonna get a, kind of a more of a dramatic scene. So again, RR allows you to move that around. So let's just go for something like that. Now the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we wanna fill this other area in. So what I'll do is I'll go in the world tab and I'm gonna hit this new button and I will hit under color, we're gonna add an environment texture. And in the environment texture, we're gonna say open. I can give you this same one, but you can also get them at HDRI Haven. They have great ones there. But this night scene, this is 4K night, kind of like that. that, that might be good. And then we need to rotate it. So what I'll do is I'll go over here and I'm gonna go into the world view and I'll hit the home button, which will center that. And because I have Node Wrangler installed, Control T, 
gives me this, and now I just need to rotate this in the world view. So let's go ahead and rotate it around. For now, that's good. So the next thing I want to do is let's go ahead and build our color maps, right? So we have this ambient occlusion. I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to go ahead and say Control T, and I'll get this like this, and then I'll take this one, Shift D, move it up here. So I've got a couple different ones. I'm going to hook this one up first. And I know that I already have this grayscale map, which was this one here. So this basically will map it. As you can see, it gives us what we're looking at. Now, one of the things that I'm having problems with is that I don't really see the viewport. So let's go back into our camera and we will go into viewport display. And let's just push this passport right out to almost the very end, something like that. And also we can go in this rendering here and say render region. This will just show it when we're in cycles. When we're in EV, we're still going to get this, but we still can see what we're doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and select our material. So we have this material. And then the next material I'm going to select is I want to basically grab that other one that we did, which was this yellow one right here. So I'm going to grab this and I'll double click on that. A couple things we're going to do here is one is we're going to make this object. And uh, let's go ahead and hook him directly up into this. Okay. Now that he's object, the other thing I want to do is I'm going to want to change this to box and this means that it'll actually render on the sides now we don't see it rendering on the sides yet it renders a little bit but we're not seeing a lot of detail there but we will once we create a mesh out of this geometry so with that done i'm going to also let's just move this up a little bit and let's go and say shift a input and let's grab a value and i'm going to stick that and this is a shortcut right so i can come over here and now i can adjust the scale in this object so i can adjust the scale so that you know i don't see something too much repeating but it gives me an idea of what's going on there so i, I kind of like that and let's go back to our camera view and now i can start moving this look lo i can move the locations around a little bit if i want to if i want to see the x and y if i just want to move it around find something that i like now what i want to do is i want to mix these two and then right click and drag a line between the two and now I get this mix, right? And with this mix, I can actually start to adjust, you know, what I want to see more or less of. Let's adjust this sun again, something like that. Okay, so right now it's actually pretty bright. Uh, let's go back in our world and let's make this 0.5. So I'm gonna darken it just a little bit there. Go back in our object and we're gonna add an emission shader. So shader and emission. And we want to, Think about what color lights we want. So we may want to have, oh, maybe we make make the lights blue and let's give them like five. So I'm going to do the same trick. I'm going to hold the control and shift key down, drag down onto this one, and it's going to give me a mix, right? And you can see that, that it blends them together. And what I'll do next is I'll grab these four and I'll say shift key and I'll move them up here. So it's just another set of images and I'm going to go in here delete this one and I'm going to open up that dot one that we did so where is that that's in uh, here and that was this dot one right here so that's the dot and we're going to basically just take this and it's going to go right into the fat take the color out of that in the FAC here let it compile and let's swap these two around and now you can see our lights coming through nicely and let's go ahead and look at that in cycles that's good maybe maybe that color might want to be a little bit brighter like that maybe 10 give it a little little higher it looks like it's pretty dense and so i can basically just i can jack the scale down to get it a little bit less dense something like that might be better the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go ahead and really punch up the resolution of our mesh this is an easy thing for us to do for now but now i've got this plane and let's just go ahead and let's pump punch up the resolution so instead of seven let's i'm going to go to 11. and it's going to take a little while and you could go to 10 or 9 depending on your computer and how well it works it takes a little while and it is incredibly dense now so if i turn this optimal display off you can see how dense that is I mean, we're zooming way in, but look at that. That's crazy dense. I want to apply all of that now that it's set up like this. So with the model selected, I'll go under Object, Apply, Visual Geometry to Mesh. 
and just hit that button and it'll take a little while. It's going to process all the different modifiers and now we're done. And now we have an incredibly dense, we've got over 4 million faces, 8 million edges, 4 million vertices. So now I'm going to add a decimate. And you may say at this point, well, if you're going to add a decimate, why wouldn't you go to planar? But if you do, you'll be sitting here for an hour. So what we'll do is we'll basically decimate point one, hit return, let it think about it. It'll, it'll do this relatively quickly. It won't take too long, 20 or 30 seconds. Okay. Now it did a decim it decimated it and we can zoom in and see that, yeah, we still have a ton of polygons, but that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and just hit this apply button and it'll take a, another 20 or 30 seconds to get that done. Okay. And we're back. Uh, and so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to zoom out on this and I'm going to, let's go to a solid view with this selected. I'll tab into it and I'll hit a to select everything. And then under mesh cleanup, I'll do a limited dissolve. And that's going to take a while, probably another 20 or 30 seconds, maybe a little bit longer. Now, if you're using the big data displacement image, you may not have to go all the way to 11 on the subdivision. You could go to maybe seven or eight or nine, you know, whatever your computer can handle. This kind of technique, it only requires you do this one time, right? So that's one of the keys. Yeah, that took about two minutes. So... Okay, so once we're in there, you can see now what it did is it flattened everything out quite nicely. So I'm going to tab out of that. Now we can look and we see that we have 66,000 faces. So we went from 4 million to 66,000. Let me turn off my face orientation so we don't see that. So that looks pretty good. I'm, I'm uh, happy with that. So that's now we have our mesh. Let's go ahead and save, save it. This is what we have so far. So let's uh, do a real quick render. And you can see this is... This is what we've got. That's what we're going to work with. Now, it looks like a lot of reflections going on here. We're going to let's go ahead and mess with the uh, material one more time. So I'm going to go in here and this particular material, what I'll do is I am going to turn the roughness up so that I don't get those reflections and take that specular and I'm going to move it down a little bit. So there we have that. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and in my render tab, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom where it says color management. And I'm going to make sure it's uh, filmic, and I want to make it very high contrast. And let's go to the world. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe at this point in the world, we'll go back to one here. Well, let's 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 put this at 0.65, and then let's let's push the sun up just a little bit. Five, seven, something like seven, and we'll do one more render. Notice our samples are crazy crazy high here. Let's just go back in my render setting and I want to set my samples to uh, something like 128. Yeah, let's do that. Now let's hit that and let's see what happens. There we go. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Um, I'm not as crazy about all this yellow. Okay, uh, to fix the yellow, uh, let's go back into our mix tile. Remember that we had to set it to one. And if I take it all the way back to zero, you see that we have just our, our regular lighting going on. So I'm going to move it into, you know, 0.5, something like that. And that basically gets rid of that quite a bit. And if I go back into my world now and I've got my rotation so I can rotate my light a little bit better. Okay, so I ended up on 0.33 for a background and I rotated it to minus 24 degrees and I got something that I pretty much like. Let's go back into our object, click on it, and uh, we'll see that this all looks pretty good. Uh, you know, I might want to look at changing this to a yellow, more of a bright yellow color so it kind of matches the rest of it. I think that probably works a little better. So the next video we will go over how to add modifiers to this existing mesh to create even more geometry and then we want to work on our compositing setup and how we're going to do a lot of the cool post effects to really make this thing sing and stay tuned thanks for watching we'll see you online and we're on to the next video